Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's quite the rainy day today. I don't know if you can see, but it's pouring rain right now. And um, something just happened that I thought could kind of be a good lesson that I wanted to share in a video. So basically today I had to take my car to the shop. It's been planned for weeks. Um, I was looking forward to it. It's something that has really needed to get done and I've been putting it off. And today was the day, it was confirmed. I was all ready, I cleared my schedule. The shop is like a 30 minute drive from my house. Yeah, I confirmed with them today that I was gonna do it and I drove out here. And then when I got to the shop, they informed me that they actually have to reschedule because because of the rain, they can't really work on it outside. They were gonna um, try to do it inside, but there's all these cars inside, so there's not really space for it. So we're gonna have to reschedule. And I was about to drive home, and I was kind of sitting here for a second. I was like, I just drove basically an hour total in the pouring rain for nothing, like literally nothing. Um, and I, I was laughing at like the humor of the situation, but also, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. It's always frustrating when stuff like this happens, but it reminded me of this lesson that I learned a few years ago and I'm going to share it with you. It's a little story. So there is this Chinese parable about a farmer and his horse. You might've heard this before. Maybe you haven't, but basically I'm going to try to, um, retell it. Hopefully I don't miss any important details, but basically there's a farmer who gets a horse. Randomly out of nowhere, a horse comes up to him. And this was great because he's a farmer. He needs a horse to work. And his neighbor was like, oh my gosh, you just got a horse. That's amazing. And the farmer just replied, maybe. And then literally the next day, the horse ran away. And he had no idea where it went. He just, just like that, he lost the horse. And then the neighbor was like, oh my gosh, the horse ran away, you must be devastated. And the farmer just replied, maybe. And then after that, the horse actually came back, but it came back with like three other horses. So now the farmer had all these horses, it was great. And the neighbor is like, oh my gosh, you have all these horses now, that's amazing. And the farmer of course just replies, maybe. And then the next day, the farmer's son is working with the horses and he's actually riding one of them but then he falls off and breaks his leg um, and it's terrible and the wife says to the farmer, oh my gosh, our son broke his leg, this is going to cost so much money, um, blah blah blah. And the farmer just replies, maybe. And then later that week, the army comes into town and there's, there's a draft, they're, they're drafting men to go to war. And luckily the son was spared because he had his broken leg. So the wife is like, oh my gosh, our son doesn't have to go to war. And the farmer, of course, just replies, maybe. And on and on it goes. And <laughs> the whole purpose of telling this story is just to say that literally anything that happens in our lives, you can choose how you respond to it. And nothing is really inherently good or bad. We give all of the meaning to it. So using today as an example, like I was frustrated for a moment after I realized I couldn't get my car done at the shop because I was like, I just drove an hour out of the way in pouring rain. I have work to do. I'm like stressed, all this stuff. But then I was like, that situation isn't inherently bad. And on top of that, you never know the way things work out. Like, have you ever heard those stories where someone d decides not to board a plane, for example, and then the plane goes down? I mean, God forbid that Hopefully that doesn't happen because then of course the other people on the plane still die. But um, but that's just an example of like, you never know like divine intervention, the way things work. Maybe this is just the way everything was supposed to unfold. That's another layer to it too. But I mean, the bigger message here is just that it's so easy for our emotions to just be like this all day. That's like normally how we respond. Like good things happen, we're excited. Bad things happen, we react, we're upset. Our whole day and quality of life is kind of governed by our emotions. Like it's governed by the way we react to things. And there's that, I think it's Charles Swindle quote that says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. That's so true because 
anything that happens to you, you can choose to respond with non-reaction. You can choose to just try to maintain your inner peace and not get emotional about it. And that's really a way of, yeah, maintaining inner peace and just living a more peaceful life because you're not letting your emotions go all over the place. And obviously this is easier said than done. Like, I mean, driving an extra hour in the day to me isn't a big deal, but like if something really devastating happened in my life, that it's really hard in those cases to not react emotionally. But when you can practice it in moments like what I experienced today and in other moments, when you can practice that throughout the day and get in a habit of just not really reacting so much to things, trying to like maintain that inner peace, that'll really help you for when big things come along and your instinct is to react really strongly to it, but you have the power within you at that point to then just kind of stay more level-headed. And that's really the power of like meditation and mindfulness and all of that. It's really just trying to stay present whenever anything happens because when you're truly present there aren't many problems like if you think about it when you're in the present moment a lot of times any stress that you're feeling is just creating your head unless you're physically in pain which doesn't happen often hopefully I mean some people do suffer a lot of pain regularly but when you're truly in the present moment, you'll find that the majority of your problems are just made up in your head. And that's why they say like suffering doesn't actually exist. Pain exists because pain is a present moment experience. Like if you put your hand on the hot stove, that's pain because you have that feeling. But then suffering is when you replay that in your head and maybe then throughout the day you say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I burnt my hand. Now I can't write. Now I can't do my work. Now I can't play Frisbee, whatever it is. And it's so normal to do all of that. Like it's so normal for our minds to really kind of control how we're experiencing the day. But this is just a little reminder that like you also have the power to change that. Like you can choose to just not respond to things. You can try to use the story of the farmer as inspiration to just kind of be more present and just not so reactive when bad things happen to you. And I think if you do that, you'll find that you have a lot more peace throughout your day. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope that you're having a good Monday. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.